Americans are working more and enjoying work less. That's Dr. Matt Bloom, associate professor at the University of Notre Dame, where he leads the Well-Being at Work program. He and his colleagues are asking, What if religion was a path to work-life balance? Dr. Bloom's team believes work can and should be a positive experience, and that simple well-being rituals could be the key to helping balance workplace stress. It also matters because my well-being and how I am at work is going to affect my coworkers, my family, my friends, my church. It means experiencing our best selves. What happens to many people is they experience downward spirals. Something happens in one area and it's just going to pull down the others. If we get too far into a downward spiral, we have to make a big change. And this is why people use the term burning out at work. Dr. Bloom's focus is on two industries notorious for burnout and stress. The first is healthcare. One of our concerns with the increasing burnout among physicians and people in healthcare is that they'll burn out to the place where they actually have to leave their work. So that's not only bad for them, but as a society, we're going to suffer. And the second stressful industry, technology. Technology is a kind of hungry beast. As soon as you feed it with one innovation, it, it's asking you to feed it with another one. Bloom and his team believe well-being is defined by four key dimensions. The first is our everyday well-being. Sometimes we call that happiness. And it's the quality of our daily life experiences. The second is resilience, which is our ability to deal with daily life challenges, but also our capacity to adapt and grow. A third element is authenticity, or what you might think of as self-integrity. And then lastly, thriving, which is a sense of meaning and purpose in work, and a sense of being connected to other people around that sense of shared meaning and purpose. Bloom says well-being alone is not enough. Faith plays a role in combating burnout. People feel like they have to leave the most important parts of themselves at the office door. And one of those things that they leave behind is their faith. What faith can do for us at work is it can point us in a direction of purpose. Faith can help us navigate challenges at work. It can help us understand that there is goodness even in difficult situations. Bloom sees the importance of being scientifically rigorous while studying the effects of faith in the workplace. We need to use quantitative methods that help us understand how people think of their faith experiences and so we can track well-being changes over time and we can learn how people who feel they can express their faith at work might have different well-being than people who can't. We'll use a mobile application that will allow us to study daily experiences and how faith shows up and how it shapes well-being. And we'll use qualitative methods to gather stories of work at its best and work at its most difficult. And we'll look for faith in those stories. And how do people use faith to understand and deal with their work experiences? But with so many stresses on today's workforce, what's the verdict on well-being in the workplace? Is it even possible? The good news is that small practices, daily rituals, are what we need to create and sustain high levels of well-being. For some people, it might be a daily walk or a daily run that is a good well-being practice. For others, it might be the prayer of examine or some mindfulness meditation. Work and life should not be enemies. Work and meaning should not be enemies. People should find work to be a place in which a sense of meaning is really central to their experience, where they find an individual purpose. They can use their gifts and talents and skills in a unique way that contributes to something they believe is important, and which they feel great at work most days.